Are you looking for a strength program that is going to get you bigger and stronger? I think I have found one that might suit your needs. We're going to review Bull Massive, which is a program by Alexander Bromley, who's an incredible creator on YouTube. He's got a ton of impactful information to help get you stronger. I've just finished up nine weeks of the program and I wanted to give you my general thoughts, a little bit of an overview on what the program is, what it isn't, and how it can help you get stronger and a little bit bigger. So let's dive into some pros and some cons. Pro number one and probably my favorite thing about this program is the AMRAPs that are added as a tool for progression. AMRAPs, if you don't know, stands for as many reps as possible. And it is what it is. It's doing a set for as many reps as you possibly can. But what's interesting about Bull Mastiff is the AMRAP is the primary tool of progression. When you start off, you are given a percentage of your one rep max. So week one, you're doing 65% of your one rep max, three by six. But at the end of those three sets of six, you're going to do an AMRAP with that same weight. When the AMRAP is done, you take how many sets you did, subtract the base reps, so in this case six, and you use the extra reps to add your weight for the next week. Let's do a real world example. You have a 400 pound one rep max squat. You finish up your first AMRAP and you get 10 reps. You would subtract six from 10, leaving you four reps, and you would take 4% of your one rep max, which is about 15 pounds, and add that to the working weight that you use in the next week. Then you repeat the process. This is a really fun way to progress your program. If you're tired of percentages or RPEs, this can be an interesting way to continue to progress, to use progressive overload, while having a little bit of objectivity. The AMRAP style of progression is not magic, but what it is is very, very interesting. And it kind of gives you some freedom. You know that you hit an AMRAP of 10 last week, so you can reasonably guess that the next week you're going to be able to add the weight that is prescribed. One little caveat to this style of progression, I found that the lower body worked really well, adding the extra reps as you went week by week. The upper body was a little bit touch and go. I may be very good at doing reps and that may not translate over to my general strength. I would recommend when you finish the AMRAP on your upper body movements, your bench press and your overhead press, maybe subtracting one rep away from that so your percentage will be a little bit lower. That was what worked best for me. Do a little experimentation, see how it feels. If you find that your upper body is right on track with your lower body, then keep going the way that it's prescribed. That was a pro, let's hit a con because there are no perfect programs. So there are some things that I would change if I was the one writing this program. And the first one up is lack of accessory movement variety. Accessory movements in this case, you're hitting a primary squat, you're hitting an accessory deadlift. So it could be your competition squat and a Romanian deadlift or a snatch grip deadlift. And it moves like that. What I think would be beneficial to the program is after each three week wave, you also change out the accessory movement, which is what I ended up doing. I do this for personal preference because I find that movements get very stale after three to four weeks. And because the program is based on a wave of progression, so every three weeks you reset and you start the AMRAP progression again, I thought that it worked really well to also switch out the accessory movement. This can get a little dangerous if you do not have a background in programming. I am a strength coach, so I do this for a living. I know which movements work for me, which movements I've had success with in the past, which movements I like and can help me bring up lagging weak points in my primary movement. So that's why I felt comfortable switching out these accessory movements every three weeks. If you are on the newer side of lifting and you do not have a great base of knowledge in strength programming and programming in general, I would recommend sticking to the plan as much as possible. Stay with these movements. They may be beneficial for you to continue to do them after every three week wave. But if you're like me and a little bit of variety helps remove some of the staleness and kind of staves off some overuse injury, it could be beneficial for you to switch them out every three weeks. Another pro that I really enjoyed is that this program is incredibly specific. There is no fluff here. A lot of these power building type programs, add in a ton of variety and bodybuilding exercises, which is great if that's your goal, but this program seems to be marketed towards power lifters who want to add some strength to their squat bench and deadlift and have a primary overhead press day as a way to continue to push their bench press forward. You're going to be doing a lot of squat, bench, deadlift. That's great. 
That specificity is going to continue to drive progress. When you first look at the program, it may seem sparse in terms of its bodybuilding accessories. On upper body day, you're doing three accessory movements, a tricep movement, a bicep movement, and a rear delt movement. That's it. Lower body day is very similar. This is because you want your primary work to be the squat, the bench, and the deadlift, and the accessory movement on that day. It makes a lot of sense, but a lot of people think they need to pile on a ton of work to continue to see progress, when sometimes you just have to really focus on the main movement and it will progress itself. One last thing, and it's not really much of a con, it's more so knowing yourself and knowing how you train. This program does rely pretty heavily on volume being the main driver of progression. So every week, that you do a wave, you're going to see an extra set added on to your accessory movements. You're going to see extra reps added on to your main movement. That is on purpose. Volume is a driver of progression in this program as well as the intensity that you're doing with the AMRAPs. So it is important to understand if you are a person who does not do very well in a high volume context, meaning that you start to fatigue or burn out from too much volume, or you are not good at choosing intensities that go along well with the amount of volume, then this program may not be best for you. So there you have it folks, a couple pros and a couple cons about this program. I would give it a four out of five. I thought this was a really, really fun program, a good way to kind of shake the rust off of percentage base or RPE based programming. If you're getting a little bogged down in the weeds, this is a good little break. I did not run the peaking side of this program because in my training right now, I'm just focused on volume. I don't have any competitions coming up. I'm just trying to put some mass on, just trying to get a little bit stronger. The peaking side remains similar to the volumizing side of this program. The wave structure, the AMRAPs, they all stay the same. It's just that the intensity continues to rise like you would with any good peak going into a test of a one rep max or a meet. I'd love to answer any of your questions that I didn't touch on in the video down in the comments. I'm gonna leave a link to Bromley's video on Massive, so you can go watch his explanation for why he programmed it. If you enjoyed the video, I would love for you to like the video and subscribe to the channel. We put out content that's gonna help you get stronger. If you're looking to start building your own strength program, you can click on this video right here to start to understand some of the concepts necessary to make you as strong as possible. Thanks so much for watching, get strong and stay strong.